Now, we know or we now have the dash cam footage showing the initial interview between police and assistant coach Dominique Taylor before that bus took off back to Las Cruces and before the gun was retrieved. I'll send things over to our reporter, Tawny Davis. Now, Tawny, what did assistant coach Taylor tell the police? Carla, in the interview with Coach Taylor, he explained how he received several missed calls from players in the middle of the night. Now, Taylor said he had about five missed calls from Is Isa Muhammad and 11 missed calls from Anthony Roy and even some from head coach Greg Heyer. Taylor said he had never heard any of those calls since he put his phone on silent and it wasn't until Heyer called his room phone that he woke up and was told the news about the incident. According to Taylor, he was one of the coaches doing bed checks that evening. Uh, I was kind of on curfew duty, so we did the room checks every time we did them, and then I sat in the lobby for till at least about 2:20 a.m. or so, just you know, keeping an eye out for guys coming and going. And then by the time I got to my room, I just turned the ringer off, you know, just to go to sleep. Also in the interview, Taylor was asked if he knew the owner of the yellow Camaro that was involved, but he said he did not. It was also emphasized to Coach Taylor the importance of finding and recovering the items that were placed in the trunk of that vehicle. And now we will, KTSM also received the initial interview Greg Heyer gave to police hours after the shooting, and we'll have more on that coming up at 6. Carla? All right, thank you so much, Tani. Well, since that shooting on November 19th, the New Mexico State men's basketball team has continued to play games. And just today, multiple players have been suspended. KTSM 9 sports reporter Sam Guzman joins us live in the studio with more. Good evening, Sam. Thank you, Carla. Well, you are right. Within the last few hours, New Mexico State officials tell KTSM that Issa Muhammad, Marcellus Avery, and Anthony Roy have all been given one-game suspensions that they will serve tonight when NMSU plays Santa Clara. Muhammad and Avery are on the road trip and will be in street clothes on the bench. As for Roy, he is still in Las Cruces, as we reported yesterday. He did not make the trip due to what NMSU termed at the time as personal reasons. Now, this suspension comes as a result of the ongoing investigation. No coaches have been suspended. Remember that Avery, Muhammad, and Roy were all named in a police report obtained by KTSM yesterday. The report says that the three of them assisted Peak after the shooting as they were seen on surveillance video getting down from a yellow Camaro that pulled up to Peak's location that morning. This is the first public form of punishment other than Peak's indefinite suspension that we are seeing from NMSU. You'll remember that players that broke curfew that day were disciplined by the university, but NMSU would not specify how they were disciplined. Additionally, NMSU said that student athletes involved in the fight at the UNM NMSU football game back in October that was the precursor to the shooting were punished, but again, it was not specified how. Up until now, all of those student athletes have played since. So again, this is the first type of public discipline we are seeing from NMSU. It comes four games after that incident happened on November 19th. The Aggies will take on Santa Clara tonight in California. Tip-off is at 8 p.m. Additionally, KTSM learned uh, today that the Bernalillo County District Attorney is working with New Mexico State Police to investigate NMSU staff and players following the shooting on the UNM campus. Carla.